today we are talking about periodic trends. Now, trends are properties of the elements that follow a pattern either down a group or across a period. So up and down this way or across the period. Okay, for our first trend, we're going to talk about atomic radius. The group trend, atomic radius increases going down a group. As you move down a group, energy levels are added, thus increasing the size of the electron cloud so the atoms get larger. The periodic trend, atomic radius, will decrease going left to right across a period. From now on, across a period will basically refer meaning left to right. Okay? Now, the atoms are getting heavier across a period, so why don't they get larger in volume? The reason has to do with something called increasing nuclear charge. As we go across and increase the number of protons from left to right, the nucleus gets a more powerful positive charge, so it can pull the electron cloud in much tighter. Now, trends in ionization energy. Ionization energy is the measure of the energy required to remove an electron from the outermost energy level of an atom. Our group trend ionization energy will decrease going down a group. This is due to the shielding effect, which is an electron in the outermost energy level of a large atom is much easier to remove because it is well shielded from the pull of the nucleus by the inner electrons. And as you can see in this diagram, the outermost electron is shielded from the nucleus by this inner level of electrons. For our periodic trend, ionization energy increases going across a period. This is due to nuclear charge. Across a period, nuclear, nuclear charge increases, so it becomes more difficult to remove an electron, meaning it's held in tighter. Note that this periodic trend supports the idea that metals have a much greater tendency to lose electrons than nonmetals do. Okay, our next periodic trend is electronegativity. Now, electronegativity is the ability of an atom and a molecule to attract electrons to itself. Electronegativity is a numerical scale which can be used to predict whether atoms will form ionic or covalent bonds and molecules. Now, for example, in H2O, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so it's going to attract the electrons closer to it, making the region around the oxygen overall more negative than the areas around the two hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms would then be slightly positive. This behavior would cause the water to be a polar molecule, which means there are areas of partially positive and negative charge. Now, the group trend for electronegativity. Electronegativity decreases going down a group. Larger atoms have more energy levels, so it's harder for them to attract electrons to the nucleus. And that's the shielding effect again. The periodic trend, electronegativity, increases across a period. Non-metallic character will increase across a period, and non-metals attract electrons more than metals do because of increasing nuclear charge. Okay, to summarize our periodic trends, atomic radius was the first one. It will decrease going across the period, and it will increase going down a group. These are good little notes you can make on your periodic table when you get it. It'll help you remember what each one does. Ionization energy and electronegativity will increase going across a period and decrease going down a group. Now the next thing to remember, your zigzag line is here. Metals will be to the left of the zigzag line and nonmetals will be to the right or if it helps, M&M, like the candy. That'll keep you in the right order. Metalloids are found along the zigzag line. Our groups are the ones that go up and down. Periods go across left to right. Oxidation numbers will be at the top of each group, and valence electrons are the number in front of the A on the periodic table up at the top. Okay, that's it for today's video. Now it's time to practice this in your practice packets.